This Steve Jones Show podcast is now loading. The Steve Jones Show podcast is presented by Sunbury Motor Company, Purdy Insurance, Brewers Outlet, and NIL Game Changers. De- Bringing you an in-depth look at Penn State sports and more. This is the Steve Jones Show on News Radio 1070 WKOK. The Steve Jones Show is presented by Purdy Insurance, Brewers Outlet, NIL Game Changers, and Sunbury Motor Company. Now from the Sunbury Motor Studio, here's Steve Jones. And the opening half hour is brought to you by Sunbury Motors, 4th Street in Sunbury. Sunbury Motors, Kia, Routes 11 and 15 in Hummel's Wharf and online at sunburymotors.com. Ford, Kia, Hyundai, best in new inventory. Great pre-owned inventory with the Sunbury Motors guarantee. Terrific service department that backs it up every step of the way. Routine to difficult to handle it all at Sunbury Motors, 4th Street in Sunbury. Sunbury Motors Kia, routes 11 and 15 in Hummel's Wharf and online at sunburymotors.com. Todd, good week to you. And I believe what, we're going to open up with Phil Steele? Hello, sir, and Phil is currently on the line. All right. My friend, it is great to have you with us once again. Uh, College football season is getting close, and you and I need to have conversations. Hey, Steve. Good to hear your voice again, my friend. Same here. The Everything changes. Now, officially, Texas and Oklahoma in today in the SEC. Everybody else in the Pac-12 can't officially change until the 2nd of August, but... Everybody's in for intents and purposes. What did that do to how you have to put together the publication and how you were ranking players because of the additions? Yeah, it made it very interesting. And, you know, as far as uh, ranking teams go, Steve, I've never had to rank an 18-team conference before with no division. So, you know, there's going to be a lot of ties in the Big Ten this year. Uh, you've got 18 teams. You've only got nine possible outcomes uh, for the the record. So it's going to be uh, a lot of ties there. 16 teams for the SEC. Made it very unusual, very bulky as far as uh, predicting the uh, conferences and divisions go this year. As far as the players go, pretty much seamless to me. I think when you take yeah. a look at the Pac-12 last year, uh, the Pac-12 was one of the best conferences in the country last year. So mm-hmm. them sliding into the Big Ten is not like, let's say, the American Conference had a couple teams go into the Big 12 last year. And none of them really fared well. It's a different animal with the Pac-12 uh, Big Ten, especially when you're taking basically uh, four of the top teams teams from the Pac-12 sliding over. Uh, so uh, the stats and things that the individual players did in the Pac-12, very comparable to what they'll do in the Big Ten. Transfer portal means a lot in all this. So let's take a couple of transfer portal quarterbacks in the Big Ten. Let's start with Dylan Gabriel. He steps in at Oregon after going from UCF, doing well at Oklahoma, and then transferring to Oregon, where now Bo Nix is a part of the Denver Broncos. How do you view what he can do in that Oregon offense for Dan Lanning as opposed to what maybe Bo Nix did? Uh, Well, I don't think he's going to match Bo Nix's numbers from last year. Those are pretty phenomenal. 45 touchdown passes, three interceptions, 4,500 yards total uh, passing, 78% completions. However... Uh, when I talked to Coach Lanning, went over the team with him, he said he's a lot like Bo Nix in a lot of ways. He's He was very pleased with what he had coming in. He's a guy that has a lot of confidence. You can coach him hard. He's got a great attitude. He's humble. And he has produced, while not a uh, 45-3 ratio, his ratio last year uh, was an outstanding 30 touchdowns, just six interceptions. He had 69% of his passes. I think he'll thrive in the Dan Lanning offense, but I don't think he'll quite match what Bo Nix did last year statistically all right now ohio state is a group that for the most part has done the homegrown quarterback route will howard's a part of this now but my understanding was at kansas state he wasn't assured of having that job with avery johnson there what's the impact you potentially see with will howard in the chip kelly offense under ryan day 
Uh, I think it's uh, probably going to be a good fit because you're going to see the quarterback run more in this offense. And I think they can afford that. Uh, generally, if you're going to run your quarterback more, you cannot afford injuries. But they've got Devin Brown, and they've got a couple of very highly touted freshmen, uh, Julian Sand and Aaron Nolan in the back. So they are able to run him more, and I think that's when Will Howard is most effective. I do think Will Howard probably would have lost his starting job at Kansas State this year. But with the supporting talent he has, like a Travion Henderson and Quinchon Junkins yeah. at running back with the receiving core they have with the Jeremiah Smith and uh, Amike Ibuka and the solid offensive line. I think he'll fit well in the offense. Uh, I just don't think he'll be one of those Heisman type of contenders. Right. Exactly. All right. Now, Penn State's got homegrown with its quarterbacks. When you know, You've had an opportunity to really examine the Nittany Lions. What do you like about the team? What are a couple of, uh, parts that give you pause? Well, I do think you're going to see Drew Allar uh, have a much better season this year. Uh, the team's got more confidence in me. He already had a 25-2 ratio last year. Yep. What I mean by uh, much better, I mean throw for more yards. He threw for 2,600 yards last year. Definitely on top 3,000. And I like the uh, I like the depth they have a quarterback as well. When you look at Perbula and you look at uh, Gronkemeyer, uh, they've got depth there. The running back position didn't get the, the bang that you would have expected out of Singleton and Allen last year. I think they get that this year, so I like that a lot. Uh, and the offensive line, uh, they g- could be up to last year's standards, but not quite as strength yet. So offensively, I like the quarterbacks and running backs. I still have question marks at wide receiver, Steve. It's really uh, probably my biggest question mark on the team. Defensively, there's just a lot to like. Uh, when you look at the defensive line, I'm rated second best in the country. Linebackers yeah. number six. DBs number nine. Yes, they lose some players out of the secondary, but I like the replacement they have coming in. No questions about any of the three units on defense and no questions about special teams. I rated number nine in the country. So I like pretty much the entire team. Question mark, major question mark of receiver and a, a minor question mark on the offensive line. Yeah, uh, and I'll, I'll give you I'll give you a name that I want you to watch because obviously I saw your four teams on the on the All Big Ten and this is the the prejudiced announcer coming out here. Okay, season. <laughs> okay, watch out for KJ Winston. At the safety spot, let's you know somewhere down the line. I think he may give you a thought about putting him on one of your teams. Okay. Yeah, Coach Franklin told me he was an all-conference player, so uh, he he agrees with you one hundred percent. All right. So, but that doesn't mean we can't disagree on something. That's okay. That's right. uh, And and I may be and I may be too close to it. You know what I mean? As opposed to so, there's differences. All right. So now. Go ahead. And, and when you follow one time, sometimes, uh, you know, it, it's tough to – you've got 16 teams in the league, so there's a lot of players out there. But I, I probably could have put Winston on that list. So I, no, I'm going to keep an eye on him, Steve. I appreciate that. Yeah, no, no. And believe me, I appreciate what you do. It was interesting years ago, I was doing the Outback Bowl when Penn State was playing Arkansas. Arkansas had – beaten Texas, and rather soundly, like 41-16 to 16 or some number in Fayetteville. And I asked Chuck Barrett, their play-by-play guy, I said, hey, Texas is coming in. How do you think they fit? He says, Oklahoma will fit fine. He says, Texas, he says, isn't physical enough. In your opinion, has Texas in the last two years become a more physical team that can play in the SEC? Yes, they definitely have. And, uh, you know, look no further than last year when they had guys like uh, Tavondre Sweat up front along with Byron Murphy. Very physical defensive tackle. In fact, that's probably the major question you have is who's going to replace those guys at DT. But they've got Collins and Broughton. Uh, Bill Norton they bring in from Arizona. They bring in a Louisville transfer and Jermaine Lowell. So they're, they're physical up front. And offensive line, uh, they've got one of the best offensive lines in the country. I rated number two overall. They also have the best quarterback room in the country. This is a Texas team that can come in and compete in the SEC right away. I rate them number four in the power poll and number four mm-hmm. overall. And they get Georgia at home on October yeah. the 19th, so that's going to be a big game. Yeah, exactly. It's amazing how Georgia plays at Texas before they ever play a game at Texas A&M because they've never played a game at Texas A&M. They've been in the conference <laughs> for 12 years. Uh, so <laughs> it's the strangest thing. How they do their business is very interesting. All right, so now let's get let's get to the Oklahoma part of it. Oklahoma's coming off one of those they beat Texas, but they have one of those rather interesting seasons. Where do you see them standing with all new opponents? 
Well, I'll give you two ways that I view Oklahoma, Steve. The first one is my power pull, which is the overall talent they have on the yeah. team. I rate them number seven in the country. Uh, when you look at them, it's Brett Venable's third year. I've gone over the team with Coach Venables each year, and you can see this defense is loaded this year. It's much different than when he first took over. And, you know, his defenses are a little complex. Third year, these players all know it inside and out. Led by Danny Stutzman at the linebacker, Billy Bowman at strong safety. They're going to have a heck of a defense. Offensive line is probably my biggest question mark. They lose five offensive linemen from last year's yeah. team. But Bill Bedma is still there as the offensive line coach. He's one of the best in the country. And Coach Venable told me he feels good about the offensive line. Now, Jackson Arnold didn't have an overwhelming bowl game, but I think he will fit in well. And the receiving core and running backs are solid. So this is a very talented team. However, they draw the SEC's toughest schedule this year. They basically play all the big boys. Uh, with the exception of Georgia. They play Alabama, LSU, Ole Miss, Texas, Auburn on the road, Tennessee. So the SEC's toughest schedule, and it's the reason I only have them rated number 20 in the country in my actual preseason top 40. Yeah, because I look at Jackson Arnold. I mean, I go back, What I think it was the Alamo Bowl. I, you know, he threw a couple touchdowns. He did some good things. He threw for over 350 yards, but he threw three picks in that game. Right? And I know it's only one game, but that's normally not what you see. I'd like to see a little bit more out of him. What about you? Yeah, that's that's it exactly. I was expecting him to really light it up in the Alamo Bowl. And as you mentioned, the yardage was there, the touchdowns were there, but three interceptions is, is something you cannot have. In fact, he had, in that one game, half as many interceptions as Dylan Gabriel threw in the entire season. But let's keep in mind he was a freshman. Yep. This is his first time on the big national stage, mm -hmm. and now he's had a full year to work as the number one guy. So I think we'll see big-time improvement in that category. And I look for a much better ratio out of him this year. Whenever we talked, Phil, about the playoff in the past, we'd say, who are the four teams? Now it's 12. So <laughs> You're not going to make me name all 12, are you, Steve? No, I'm not going to make <laughs> you name all 12. We're not going to do, not gonna do that. You know what? The reason I'm not going to make you name all 12 is I need people to buy the publication for you. <laughs> I appreciate that, Steve. <laughs> uh, but when you look at it, where's the door open for somebody that hasn't been in it before or has maybe been in it once and 12 gives them the opportunity to get there? Uh, you know, let, let's. I don't want to sound like a, a hometown team here, but let's open a door with Penn State right off the bat. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, Penn State's been landlocked behind Ohio State and Michigan in the Big Ten East for years. Now this year they avoid Michigan, they avoid Oregon, they avoid yeah. Iowa. They yeah. do have to play Ohio State, but they get them at home. And I think when you look at Penn State and James Franklin, uh, they have the talent this year. You know, there's some questions on the uh, – I mentioned on the offensive line of receiver, all the other positions are loaded, especially uh, defensively. They're number 29 in my experience chart coming in. And uh, I actually have them favored in 11 of their 12 games this year. The only one I don't is the Ohio State game. So I, I think Penn State's got that opportunity to not only make the playoff, but make some noise uh, as well. And then how about a team like Utah? Uh, yeah. You know, Utah last year had five losses, so naturally nobody's really looking at them. They're not going to be in the preseason top ten at the start of the year. But last year, Utah had a really tough schedule. They played most of their tough opponents on the road. They lost Cam Rising prior to yeah. the season, had a myriad of injuries during the course of the year, and they lost five games. But just two years ago, they were in the Rose Bowl. Three years ago, they were in the Rose Bowl. Cam Rising's back, solid on the offense and defensive line. Moving to a new conference, uh, the mm -hmm. Big 12, and I think they can die dominate the Big 12 and win it and then make themselves uh, into the playoffs. And Cam Rising has proven he can play with the big boys in the big games. So I think Utah's a team uh, that could make some noise. And, it, and maybe one more, uh, I will go back to the Big 10 mm -hmm. and, and pick on Iowa. Uh, yeah, I know Iowa hasn't had the offense in recent years, but they've got the defense this year. In fact, I expected a bunch of their defensive players to turn pro. They didn't. They, got, they all returned. Players like Nick Jackson, Sebastian Castro, uh, are back. Mm -hmm. They've got one of the best defenses in the country, one of the best special teams in the country, an offensive line that now has a veteran unit with almost everybody back. Yep. Cade McNamara, if he can stay healthy, and he wasn't even healthy at the start of last year no. uh, and wasn't healthy until he got injured. If he can have that year that you expected, they've got the running backs with Williams and Johnson. They've added some talent at receiver. They may actually have an offense to go with the defense and special teams. Mm -hmm. And then when you look at their schedule, Steve, who do you put them an underdog?
dog at this year. I mean, the road games are at Maryland, at UCLA, which is in down here, at Michigan State, at Minnesota, all those winnable. You would put them an underdog at Ohio State, but the uh, the Vegas total on them coming into the year is seven and a half. Find me five losses on that schedule, Steve. I can't, and and also the the Tim Lester effect as the offensive coordinator is going to be interesting with them. And they have put themselves in an interesting position because they have locked in 25% of their schedule forever because they have guaranteed games with Minnesota, Wisconsin, and Nebraska because they because the Big Ten asked who do you want to be as your rivals you were at, you could have up to three they took all three so they've locked in twenty five percent of their schedule and one third of their Big Ten schedule in perpetuity. Wow, that is interesting, and that's uh, I think they're really set up this year. As mentioned, yes. I thought a lot of their players are going to turn to NFL, much like Ohio State. Ohio State yeah. had a lot of players come back that could have gone. Uh, watch out for the Iowa Hawkeyes this year. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. That's right. With Ohio State, Jack Sawyer could have gone, stayed. JTT could have gone, he stayed. Burke could have gone, he stayed. Those are all on the defensive side, and then there is you know when I look at Cam Rising, for example. Yeah, I'm the guy that was announcing the game when he got hurt. So, <laughs> so I saw the so I, I saw the play and called the play. But when I watched him on the video, and then when I saw him in person, he has he, he's a really good court, college quarterback that has a swagger to him that y- you can only define if you if you watch him play. And I think that makes a big difference because they play a power style that the Big Twelve is going to have to get used to. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, last year, uh, if Rising went down, you expected Brandon Rose to step right in and take his place. He was one of the higher-rated quarterbacks yeah. at a high school, big arm mobile. He had got injured in the preseason. So they were down to their number three, number four, number five QBs during the course of the year. And basically teams could load up the box and stop them. And as mentioned last year, uh, a bunch of their big games were on the road where, you know, yeah. you get to Rice-Eccles Stadium. I don't know if you've ever been there, Steve, but it is yeah. one of the loudest venues out out there, they've got the students, uh, or they're called the MUSS, M-U-S-S, and it's the uh, student section. Uh, they get most of their tough games at home this year, so they're a team to look out for. Yeah, have not, and that's a place I want to go. Uh, I do have to ask you about Alabama with uh, Kalen DeBoer. It's been interesting with them, uh, and now when you talk, I'm sure you talked with him as well. What was the impression he had of his team? Because it's not as if he's never been to a national championship game. Last time I checked, that was January. <laughs> Absolutely. And i, I got to be honest with you, Steve. When uh, when Nick Saban stepped down, I remember all those folks hit the portal, uh, big-time names going yeah. in the portal. You know, I'm like, okay, yeah. maybe Alabama's in for a rebuilding season. But talking to Coach DeBoer and going over the team with him, uh, first of all, it's a talented team, a uh, really good roster. And he brought in some players, like uh, Parker Brailsford. Remember they had snapping problems at Alabama yes, last year? A lot of bad snaps during the year. Solved. They brought in uh, the Joe Moore Award-winning center, mm-hmm. Parker Brailsfield, to, mm-hmm. to handle that. Uh, in the secondary, they lost some key players, but they bring in a Damani Jackson from USC, a Keon Saab from Michigan. Yes. So they're in good shape there. And going over the squad with them, uh, I feel they actually have more talent on this year's Alabama team than he had on last year's team that played the national title at Washington. And yeah. keep in mind, he's 104-12 and 12 as a head coach. And my first question to him, Steve, was um, what's it like taking in this, you know, filling the shoes of a legend? Uh, how tough is that? And he says he can handle it, and uh, he's pretty confident about that. So I, I liked everything about going over the squad with them. We talked for at least an hour going over the team, and uh, I think they're, they're going to be a surprise contender. I think a lot of folks are writing them off because Nick Saban's gone, a lot of talent left, but they have a lot of talent there, and Kalen DeBoer can sure get it out of them. Beware of an Alabama team that you're like, okay, we're okay now. Beware. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I know Caleb Downs is with Ohio State, but the, you know, but Saab's a good player. Came in from Michigan, I believe, yep. if I remember correctly. Yeah. So, hey, absolute pleasure. This went by in a blink as usual, and uh, we will catch up again, I hope, before the season starts. Well, we better, Steve. I mean, uh, as you mentioned, I, I could have swore we just got on the phone here and uh, and we're we're done with it already. So, yeah, <laughs> we d- that should definitely do this more times. Thank you, Phil. You're the best. And uh, again, his publication, 
get it and uh, uh, the the primary places they can get it would be the only places you can get it yeah. are Barnes and Noble and Books yeah. a Million. Those are the only two places Perfect. that you can go out and get it. So save your gas money, Barnes and Noble, Books a Million exclusively, or PhilSteel.com. And when you go to PhilSteel.com and get the hard copy, we give you the digital copy for free, and we actually update the digital all the way through September. So Barnes and Noble, Books a Million, PhilSteel.com. Absolutely, Phil. Thank you so much. We'll talk soon. Sounds good, Steve. Have a good one, my friend. You too. The great Phil Steele. Uh, uh, honest to goodness, I mean, could have we could have gone on and on and on. Right. Uh, he's fabulous. Hey, if he All had right. the time, uh, I'll listen to you. It was unreal. You know, there's some people that can talk on and on and on about a subject, but enough of the suit uh, when it comes to the Indy 500. Phil Steele <laughs> on college football, I can listen for hours. He knows everything about everybody. If I were to bring up Conference USA or the Mid-American Conference, he could have run it down for you. Unreal. Brought to you by our, in this opening half hour by our great friends. At Sunbury Motors, 4th Street in Sunbury, Sunbury Motors, Kia, Routes 11 to 15, Hummels Wharf Online, SunburyMotors.com, and News Radio 1070 WK, okay? Party time, game time, or just fun time. Doesn't matter what time it is, because it's Brewers Outlet time. The Beverage Supermarket has the area's largest beer selection, imports, microbrews, ciders, and domestics. Pick from over 100 ice-cold 12-packs and dozens of 24-ounce singles. Soda, snacks, hot sauces, fresh roasted peanuts. Make it one-stop party shopping, and don't forget the pickle bar. So whatever you're celebrating or just doing it up, Brewers Outlet, Reagan Street, Sunbury, wants to see you. And thank you for your years of patronage. You want a unique way to display your brand. You need a team of seasoned experts to work with. You want to reach customers who buy. You want NIL Game Changers, a versatile consulting agency powered by former student athletes and coaches who work as NIL sports agents. NIL Game Changers will help you build powerful relationships with customers through compelling stories with student athlete influencers as your leading edge. Finally, we'll equip you with the right media to drive your success home. NILGameChangers.org Building meaningful relationships with your customers. Bringing you an in-depth look at Penn State sports and more. This is the Steve Jones Show on News Radio 1070 WKOK. The Steve Jones Show is presented by Sunbury Motor Company, Purdy Insurance, Brewers Outlet, and NIL Game Changers. Now from the Sunbury Motor Studio, here's Steve Jones. And this half hour brought to you by NIL Game Changers, your ultimate destination for name, image, and likeness opportunities. Yeah, get your journey started today. They can really help you. It's all at NILGameChangers.org. Great talking with Phil Steele. Now, this is the day that Oklahoma, Texas, and SMU go into their new conferences. So as of today, Texas and Oklahoma are officially done with the Big 12 and officially in the SEC. SMU is officially done with the American Conference, and today they are a full member of the ACC. Well, you're saying, well, what about Washington, Oregon, USC, UCLA, and the Pac-12 schools? No. Right, They will all join officially, officially. They'll all be at their media days and so forth because we all know they're in, right? So everything is starting with the upcoming year. But it's actually August 2nd. That's why there's no big, uh, there's no big deal today uh, put out by the Big Ten Conference. No big deal. To have Stan- you know, Stanford and Oklahoma officially join the ACC, August 2nd. Uh, Utah, Arizona, Arizona State, Colorado all officially join the Big 12 August 2nd. Why? Because the media rights deal that the Pac-12 sign runs out August 1. Which means the grant of rights runs out August 1. 
It's a date technicality. That's all it is. Did you see about the Pac-12 network? It went dark, I think, didn't it? Well, uh, I think it went dark for the most part, but there's still places where you can get it. Uh, oh. And uh, one yesterday, all day yesterday, they were showing uh, ga- oh, games at Oregon State beat Oregon. And then today is uh, Washington State beating Washington. <laughs> <laughs> Great. We're going to see the greatest Oregon State and Washington State hits. Uh, I think neither one of them ever beat USC. No, I'm just kidding. So, <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's... Uh, But that's why if you're wondering, like, oh, yeah, USC, okay, this is the big day. They all transition over. Actually, that's not true. Um, uh, and I've tried to explain and I don't know how many times. I don't know how many times I've explained this to, to on the show I have. Um, only because that's the reason why. That's why it's like July 1. I, you know, why don't you talk about, well, actually, they're not a officially in it. <laughs> That's the reason. Um, and we're not going to do some big celebration on August 2nd. We're just <laughs> but you think about what, what you have to do, like simple transition stuff. We've talked about the on-the-field stuff. But now there's other parts that go to it. All right, for example, uh, the Galen Center has a new floor. So they just went out and bought a new floor and they've installed it and it has the Big Ten logos on it. Done. Oregon, ever seen their basketball floor? It, it, it's As you're watching the game, your eyes are like, what are we doing here? <laughs> it looks like some sort of psychedelic, psychedelic dream. Uh, uh, they replaced the floor. Same thing, Big Ten logos on it. But Washington at the at Edmondson Pavilion and UCLA at Pauley, uh, they are going through the entire process of resanding the entire floor. It's actually a very expensive process to go through because they've got to take you know because the Pac-12 logo, for example, was on the court. Right, the Big Ten logo is at the free throw line. Right? So it's not as like, hey, we'll get rid of this, we'll put this on. No, that's not where it goes. Oh. And so now here's here's one that's difficult. Okay. Logos on jerseys. Oh, the Big Ten logos on the jerseys like the Pac-12 logo was. Okay. Think about Oregon football. They have to come up with 1,440 of them. Why? Because they wear 12 uniforms for 12 games and they're all a different color scheme. (laughs) So they have to have different patches on each each one to match it from the Big Ten. Now Nike's taking care of that. That they, so Nike will take care of that. That's not that's that won't be an issue. But on the other uniforms, and they do they change up uniforms on basketball, baseball, right, volleyball. They're going to have to have those hand sewn. It just takes time. They have to go through all their facilities. So what Texas did is Texas went around with iPhones and took pictures of every place there was a Big Te- a Big Twelve logo. Everywhere, training room, hot cold tub room, right, uh, locker room, some place on the stadium. You know, there's so many places where the conference logo is that you know and, and some of the places are incredibly subtle 
And they had to inventory all of them so they could change them over to SEC logos. It's a you know it's a time consuming process, and so what Texas did was they decided to do as many as they could, including uh, their volleyball court. They did their volleyball court in December because whenever they change, whenever they do courts, whenever Texas does courts, they always do it after the false any fall sport like volleyball or whatever, and they're going to uh, change the court over. For whatever reason, whether it's sanding it down, just uh, in normal maintenance or whatever, they always do it when the season's over in December. So that's when they did that. But you have to change to change all those things. They can't be a Big Twelve logo up anywhere. It's got to be all SEC logos, and they're in places you don't think they would be in. You know, I can walk down the corridor at Medler Field at Lebrano Park. There's a Big Ten logo in the corridor. Okay. See, I mean, you got to find places like that. You know, visiting locker room. I mean, the batting cage. Here, they the batting cage at Medler Field, LeBron Park. The batting cage has a Big Ten logo in it. Okay. I mean, these are all things that you have to change over that's, you know, the marketing department has to, has to go through. And so Houston which has made a few conference changes over the time, decided to do as many lighting logos as possible. Why? Because it's easier to change lighting logos instead of changing the entire wall. (laughs) Right? I'm just sitting here thinking, you know one's going to get missed at one of these schools. (laughs) <laughs> but that, but that's why, for example, they went through with iPhones mm-hmm. and took pictures of everything so they could literally check mark. Now, if, well, is it possible they get missed? Sure, right? There's no question about that uh, that they can be missed. No, you're absolutely right, Todd. Absolutely, and they probably will be. But if you if you've taken months to catalog where they all are, your odds of missing. As few as possible becomes greater. How about that? Um, and that's going to be, you know, that's part of what they have to do. I mean, it's some people just think it's simple, you know, because look, they see the football field, they see the basketball court, volleyball court, whatever. Okay. Um, I think Penn State, Penn State probably has a Big Ten logo on the side of the mat, doesn't it? I, I, I think it's one of those things where you don't I really mean, think about it. They've right, been in the because, Big Ten so long. Yeah, you don't think about it because you're always looking at the center of the mat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> where some Penn State guy's pinning another guy. Um, but, yeah. Um, but, you know, I mean, those are all, like, you always have to take care of the little things, the big things take care of themselves. Well, that's on that list of little things. Like, that's a big thing. Because, I mean, the SEC doesn't want a camera shot, and you still have a Big 12 logo someplace that can be seen. And you know somebody in social media will take a screenshot of it and say, hey, look at this. I still think of the Big 12. Like, okay, really, back to the basement. <laughs> okay, we got it. We missed it. Okay. Um, but yeah, uh, uh, you have to. I know you guys. I know you guys charter planes. The, the Big Ten stuff isn't on that stuff or anything, is it? No, 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 no. Uh, football travel is with United, and it's a variety. It's not a wide variety, but like uh, of charter services that are not. Um, commercial airlines, okay, but there's there's no logo on it at all, even on, on the plane. So, no, there's not there. But I, I'll give you something as uh, um, the uh, travel part of it. Uh, UCLA talked to when they got it when when UCLA was officially voted in. One of the first calls they got was from the people at the University of Minnesota. The people in Minnesota said, hey, look, it's great to have you on board. What can we do to help you as to what, about how the Big Ten works? 
you know, like, wow, okay. Well, it turned out that UCLA then, starting with Minnesota, set up a series of Zoom calls with people in the Big Ten. And one of the um, administrators at UCLA, not Martin Jarman, but one of the administrators said, hey, look, when it came time to talk about nutritional needs on the road in specific cities, he says, I was blown away. They already had it done because the Big Ten was offering up solutions from the schools. He said, our people already had it done. He said, I, I was sitting there in the meeting. I was in complete shock. And that's you need that kind of cooperation because there's, there's when it comes to travel, so it's just, you know, uh, it's one thing football, it's a massive group. You do it five times a year. Four of them are, in, you know, and it could be five of them in the conference, okay? Four one year on the road, five another year. Right. But you don't go every, everywhere. You're only going to those four places. Well, in the Big Ten, in a two-year span, you are going to go everywhere. Okay? For example, Oregon and Washington come to the Jordan Center this year. Next year, Penn State's going to Eugene and Seattle in basketball. So in a two-year span, Penn State's going to play everybody in their place in basketball. Probably the same thing in volleyball. So there have been some conversation, because Mick Cronin, Mick Cronin, the UCLA basketball coach, is a great guy. I don't know if you've had a chance to talk to him or whatever, but Mick is, I really personally like Mick a lot. Yeah, he loves the horses. So Girardi's in tune with Mick. Um, and, uh, and when I've talked to him, he's been terrific. There was some conversation by some people like, hey, what about maybe UCLA when it comes time to them, for them to come east to play Penn State? How about the Palestra? Okay. It was my understanding it that the UCLA people, Mick would be is fine doing it, but here's what they would like to do idealistically. They'd rather play a game at the Jordan Center first, then down the road maybe play in Philadelphia. And the reason they want to do the Jordan Center part first is they want to make a trip to State College as a team to then, as a logistical staff, see what it's actually like to do a game in State College. Where do you stay for the hotel? Where do you get the food from? Where do you, you know what I mean? All the things that go with it. You know, you know which bus service do we use? Oh, okay, we get Fullington. Great. Okay, what hotel do we stay in? Pick one. Okay, what do they have for a food operation there? Not every hotel that you know you go to, right? I mean, some of them don't have a food operation. I mean, some of them don't have a food operation. You have to bring it in from the outside, depending on the place you stay in. Not every place is like, hey, we're full service. We have everything. Most are, but not all. So, uh, you know, yeah. You know, you know, what, you know, you know, can we land at their airport? Yes. Okay, great. What bus company? Okay, great. What hotel? Okay, great. Okay, what food service do we have? Great. You know, uh, what time is normally do they do shoot-arounds there? Okay, great. We, all those things that, okay, now we have a working book on what it's like to go to State College. Those are all things they're going to have to do. I mean, look, and I've got, Todd, I've gone through this twice. I've gone through this twice because I did all nine years of the Atlantic 10. And I, I've done every year of the Big 10. So I remember, okay, you go to St. Bonaventure. What hotel do you stay in? The whole thing. Well, we finally ended up switching hotels. It used to go to the Castle Inn. Then we ended up switching to a courtyard. Like maybe by year seven? You know. Penn State was in the Atlantic 10 nine, nine seasons, so year seven finally started doing that. And I got to the point where we are only kind of using it as a way station because we went up the day of the game. Bruce, I mean, Bruce didn't like going to Olean. Right? You know, where do you go? Okay, you fly. if you fly to D.C., we'd fly into Reagan National to go to the GW game. Okay, and where do you stay for the GW game? You know, Smith Center in in actual D.C., you know, where do you stay? What kind of services do they have? 
what's the traffic issue getting from the airport over because it is a major city. You know, see, all these things that you've got to do, and the same thing with the Big Ten. All of a sudden, you're like, okay, Champaign-Urbana. Okay, what hotel are we in? And we've changed hotels in Champaign-Urbana so many times. So many times. I can give you, in fact, I can get, I can be the travel agent for that place. <laughs> We finally have basketball settled on the I Hotel. And so James was asking me about the I Hotel, and I said, I said, James, we can't stay there. He says, why not? He says, Illinois football team stays there. I said, they have it. He goes, oh. Yeah. <laughs> I said, but for basketball, we can stay there. And that that's the, the I Hotel is the best hotel in, in that area, easily. Okay? But see, the, see all these logistical things that, you know, when you do it the first time, you then get a better lay of the land. And so those are all things all these people are going to have to do that are going to have to take some time. The players don't have to worry about it. Um, the head coach worries about it because the head coach worries about everything. James is so detailed. He wants to know about everything. And Andrew Nelson, who's now on in sports performance, Andrew and I had a long talk in Philadelphia back in May about the USC trip, because he was asking me what Penn State did the last time they went to USC. You know, and I was on the trip, because I was the third announcer at that, at that stage of my career. And I said, Andrew, I said, we left State College early in the morning, I don't know, 6, 6.30, I said, whatever the number was. Got to Harrisburg and flew out of Harrisburg all the way over. I said, and then played the game, then flew back to Harrisburg, and then bus back up. Because some people have asked whether they're going to leave on Thursday. Well, you got, you know, how are you going to do this? And when I was talking to him about what we did in 1990 and in 91, those are the last two years Penn State went to the West Coast in the regular season. Uh, and the way I explained it, at least from memory, way I explained it, it sounds pretty close to what he wants to do this time, too. Because you want to take a bigger plane out there, for example. I remember taking the plane to Dublin, and now they're triple sevens. Back, you know, 10 years ago, it was a 747. You know, with with beds in the upper compartments, things like that, you know. And that may be what you want to do with this. But you need a longer runway to do it. That's why you need Harrisburg. So I mean, I don't know. I don't know if they've settled on what they want to do, but I know it. I know it's been a discussed option. How about that? You know. I mean, I know the suit has a bed set up in the in the corner office, but that's just during the work hours. No. For sales meetings. Oh. <sighs> I have no words. <laughs> no words. Okay. This half hour brought to you by NIL Game Changers. Okay. Uh, you know, you want to get your journey started, business, athlete, NILGameChangers.org here on News Radio 1070 WKOK. Hmm. When car repairs get difficult. Well, I. I just don't know. Um, me neither. We get good. Sunbury Motors. More than quality new and used cars, Sunbury Motors specializes in complicated auto repair diagnosis. They can handle intricate repairs and even complete auto body with service open Monday through Friday, 7 till 4. And Sunbury Motors has made simple repairs easy. Maintaining your vehicle is necessary. Finding the time to do it is difficult. Welcome to Sunbury Motors Quick Lane. Just walk in or call ahead. Relax in their remodeled waiting room with Wi-Fi, beverages, and snacks. Will Sunbury Motors factory train techs take care of your oil change, tire alignments, brakes, and inspections. Quick Lane, 6.30 to 6, Monday through Friday, Saturday, 6.30 till 2. Sunbury Motors, Ford and Hyundai, North 4th Street, Sunbury, and Sunbury Motors Kia, routes 11 and 15 in Hummel's Wharf. We take the mm. out of auto repair. Hi, this is Season. For over 100 years, the Purdy Insurance Agency has been protecting families and businesses of the greater Susquehanna Valley and beyond. With the experience of our trained and knowledgeable staff, you can rest assured that your needs will be evaluated and met by some of the industry's best representatives. No matter what your insurance needs are, call Purdy Insurance today at 570-286-5855 
visit our website at purdyinsurance.com or check us out on Facebook to see what we can do for you. 